Okay, we're in section 58 now. Again, there's contents for you to read through, try to understand the contents you're reading, examples to reinforce what you're reading, and then exercises for you to work on. Uh, my name is Ron Bannon. It's a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells's Advanced Course in Algebra that dates back to 1904. The PDF document is being made available to the Prison Mathematics Project participants only. I do plan to publish this at a later date, and for teachers and students that are interested in seeing that, just reach out to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll update you about when that's going to be done. All right, But right now, it's not ready. Again, my email address is beasonboy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. All right, let me scroll and see what this, this is all about. And it's certainly something to do with what we've done in the past. What, what's sent over here is there's going to be problems involving. Now, when he says problems, he's talking about word problems, all right? So this is all about word problems. They're going to be quadratic in nature, all right? So I'm going to just <coughs> scroll through that. And what I want to do is, you know, I want to read the question to you. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you. Reading tends to be the most difficult things that students are faced with. And word problems really do cause students to transmit a problem. Right. Now, what I like to do when I'm reading a word problem is try to focus in on what they're asking for. And the first thing I would write down is what they're asking for. And just you know, a quick read through it. I'm not trying to memorize what I read, but he wants to know the cost of the watch. So I would say X is the cost of watch in dollars. All right, like $20, $30, $100, $10,000. I have no idea. But it says a man sold a watch for $21. So he sold the watch for $21. But then they go on to claim and lost as many percent as the watch cost in dollars. That's tough. I want to point out, you really want to think about what he said over here. Let's write it down. So again, I'm not saying it's easy. A man sold a watch for $21 and lost. That means something happened. So the cost of the watch, he lost something. He's losing money. So he has the cost of the watch, he lost money. Let's take a look at it. As many percent as the watch cost. Wow. So what's it going to be? Well, the watch cost X, and that will be X over 100. That's the percent of what? Of the cost of the watch. I got my equation. Let's try to solve it. What do you get? 21 equals X minus X squared over 100. Again, there's a variety of ways of doing this over here. I'm going to say the way I like to, I like to clear the fraction this would be 2,100. I'm multiplying both sides by 100, by the way. Equals 100x minus x squared. I'm going to rewrite it so it's equal to 0. I like a positive coefficient on the x squared term. Well, I don't think it's going to be that bad. But for some students, 2,100 is an outrageously large number. So I need two numbers that multiply to 2,100 but sum to minus 100. Well, it doesn't look bad. You know, it certainly do 3 and 7. So I'm going to say 30 and 70. Minus, minus. So let's write this down. So x could be 30. Or the x could be 70. Now someone says, I have no idea what those answers mean. Well, this is why we write things down. It's the cost of the watch. All right? Now... I, I certainly want to write this down to check it. And that's all you could just read the answer. But I want to check it. Let's put this down. So it's going to be 21. That's, that's what he got. What was the cost of the watch? Well, let's try 30 first. And then what did he do? He lost 30%. 30% of what? Of 30. What do you get over there? That's going to be 21. Equal, I'm just checking. 30. I want to see if it's a good answer. And uh, what do you get over there? Uh, let's see. That would be 0.3 times 39. That checks. So the watch could have cost $30. 
Let's see if 70 goes. Let's see what happens. 70. I'm sorry. I made a mistake there. That's 70 of mine. 21, 70, minus 70% of 70. What does that give you? 21 equals, I'm just checking, 70. And that would be 49. It's, again, is doing the arithmetic there. And that's, yeah, 21. Works beautifully. So we have two answers now. And these answers and the work is written down for you. Cost of watch is 30 or 70. Either answer satisfies the conditions. All right, so this one over here, again, I, I'm reading it. I'm trying to make sense of what I'm reading. A lot of times it takes time to understand what you've read. But the bottom line, I would say it would be nice if you knew what he was talking about. So it says, a farmer bought some sheep for $72. If he had bought six more for the same money, they would cost a dollar a piece less. How many did he buy? So I'm gonna say X equals, whoops. I'm gonna say X equals the number of sheep bought. Number of sheep bought. And I gotta go back and read. All right, so he bought some sheep for $72. I know that much. I clearly see that, but it really doesn't tell me much though. Now, if you bought some sheep at $72, I know the cost per sheep, maybe I should write that down. Cost per sheep. Well, what did he, it's $72 and he bought X sheep. So $72 per whatever number of sheep it is. That's a cost per sheep. And then what it says, it says if he bought six more, well, if he bought six more, how many sheep would he have? He'd have X plus six. If he bought six more, the, for the same money, by the way, right? So if he bought six more for the same money, well, the cost per sheep then would be what? That's if he purchased six more. This is the cost per sheep if he bought six more. Let's take a look. If he bought six more for the same money, I right, just read that pretty clearly, they would have cost a dollar, him a dollar a piece less. Let's write that down. So, well, the cost was a dollar less, right? All right, we got our equation down. Now, someone says, what do you do with that? You got to solve it. And uh, certainly, X has got to be an integer. More importantly, it has to be a positive integer. So I'm looking at this equation here. I'm going to make some attempt to solve it. And let me write that down for you. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD. The LCD is x, x plus 6. So you can get 72x equals 72 x plus 6. Minus, well, it's going to be a tough one, right? X times X plus 6. Yep, kind of jam it in there. 72X equals 72X. Well, I got to do 6 times 72, right? 6 times 2 is 12. <coughs> 12. Let's see, 42, 43. Minus x squared minus 6x. I still have to simplify, don't I? Well, what's nice about this, this just disappears when you subtract from each side. And then I'd get what? Let's write this down. You'd get x squared uh, plus 6x. Again, I like the positive coefficient on the square terms, so I did that. Minus 432 equals 0. And let me repeat this. I, 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 if this problem is written correctly, it's got to be like an integer solution problem, right? And let's just, let's just try. The 432 is a killer though, right? Now, certainly if I'm looking at 432, and I'm going to say like if you did that, you know, 2, very unlikely that because the difference wouldn't be anywhere near 6. That would be 215, 216. And then I might say 4, 
and then you get 108. Right, you get the idea what I'm doing? Then I might take a, another two out of it. That would be eight. And then when you, and yeah, I'm just looking at, I'm looking around for something that's gonna differ by six, and that would be 54. Well, and I'm still looking at that. And I could take another two, but I get a 16 and a 27. And that's not gonna be six. So instead of taking a two from the 54, I'm taking three. So if I took a three from the 54, the eight would become 24. And three goes into 54 18 times. So I'm gonna say they definitely differ by six now. So I can put the 24 and 18 down. What's the sign gonna be? Plus 24 minus 18. What's the answer over here? X equals minus 24 or X equals 18. I hope you realize that minus 24 sheep is not possible. So how many sheep? 18 sheep. We can recheck it with the word in the problem. My encouragement to you is this though, read, all right? We have an answer key for you. And certainly we think it's a good answer key. If you don't think it's a good answer key, you gotta reach out to me and let me know it's not a good answer key. So again, it says only positive, extra, admissible. We discussed that. Uh, for the negative value does not satisfy the condition of the problem. Therefore, the number of sheep is 18, as stated, all right? So, you know what? I noticed that number three is the same thing. I gotta delete this. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't do that. I gotta get rid of that. All right, so that's just the same question twice. I'll get rid of that in the notes, don't worry. Where are we now? Exercise. What's the worst part about these exercises? <coughs> They're word problems, and I'll be honest with you, I also struggle with word problems. I have to read them sometimes several times. So what do we do over here? We give you the word problem, I put down what my work would look like, and I solve the problem for you, all right? I don't think you should look at my work, though. I think you should solve the problem, don't look at the work. In other words, you try to do this on a piece of paper, then what do you do? You look at it, you try to do this one on a piece of paper, then you look at it, so forth and so on and try to get through that. And I'll be honest with you, some of these you might find very, very difficult. All right, that's fine. I find a lot of things difficult too. I have to think about them. I, I really welcome the chance to think. All right, so let me keep going through this. I'll just make sure you understand what we're doing over here. There's, there's a lot of word problems. But, but again, Wells is of the opinion, if you understood what he talked about and you know, got through a few problems, you probably could work on more problems. Do they get more difficult as you go up in the numbers? I think so. I think they get more difficult. That's my, my, my default assumption. That's typical in math, that things get more difficult the higher the number you go. And there's a large number of problems here. 30, 31. Wow. And I, the, the last, the little really tough this one over here it looks really tough. There's a lot of work down. All right. You got the page, uh, I'm sorry, number 32. Then you get to the SAGE business. Again, I, I, I keep you know, saying this over and over again. It's a computer algebra system or a CAS. What do you do? It's, um, you go to this website over here. It's freely available software, so you're allowed to download it, and, or you can use the interactive web-based application. And type the code in. See how it relates to the word problems. Again, when you're doing the word problems, if you think there's any errors in what I've uh, given you, you can certainly reach out to me. My email address is Bannon. Uh, that's B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. So please reach out. Thank you so much for listening.